Okay, uh, this is a planning board meeting, August 21st, 2024. As a preliminary matter, this is Woody Knight, Chair of the Newbury Planning Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Planning board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Pete Pecos? Hello. Larry Murphy? Uh, here. Uh, Scott Kinter? I can hear you. And Steve Mangian. Here. Very good. Town staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Kristen Grubbs. Yes. Uh, anticipated speakers, presenters on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Damon Ches Jesperson, Wiffle Tree Works. Present. Very good. Um, good evening. This is August 21st, 2024, open meeting of the Newbury Planning Board is being conducted remotely consistent with chapter two of the acts of 2023, which extends the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law until March 31st, 2025. This order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location and allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Newbury Planning Board is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the Planning Board's agenda, which can be found on the town's website in which identifies how the public may join. You may join us by going to http semicolon slash slash zoom dot us and entering meeting ID 832 7141-3056, passcode 108790, or by calling 1-929-205-6099-US and entering the meeting ID number and passcode when prompted. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating, participating by video and or telephone conference. The meeting is also being broadcast live through local access cable channel nine on Zoom and at www.tnctv.org. And the recording will be available on the Newbury Access channel, YouTube channel. Um, meeting materials were provided to the board prior to the meeting for review. Applicants or their representatives may be called upon to speak and, if needed, share information to the screen. Please state your intention after you have been called. Meeting business ground rules. Before we turn to the first item on the agenda, please permit me to cover some ground rules for our effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. As chair, I'll introduce each speaker to, on the agenda. After speakers conclude their remarks, I will go down the list of board members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, for all attendees except board members and staff, please remember to mute your computer or your phone when you are not speaking. <clears throat> please use earbuds, earphones, with tablets or cell phones. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Please be aware that video participants can see you and that you should take care not to share screen your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If board members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself when you wish to speak. Public comment. There will be an opportunity for public comment and questions during public hearings. After board members have spoken, I will afford the public an opportunity to comment and or ask questions as follows. I will see questions and comments through the Zoom raise hand function. Video conference participants, to raise your hand, hover over the bottom of the Zoom window below the photo gallery and click on the gray hand that appears. Please ensure that your name is fully and correctly displayed on the participant list. You may rename yourself by using the more function next to your name. 
telephone participants to raise your hand in the Zoom meeting, hit star nine on your phone keypad. I will then allow questions and comments from members of the public who have raised their hands in the order in which they are listed, which is determined by the order in which people click on the raise hand function. Each participant will be called on to provide his or her name and address, and then ask a question or make a comment. I will afford the applicant participant or his or her representative the opportunity to reply. Your hand will be lowered when you have been given the floor for your questions. I will then continue down the list of those in the raise hand column, and again, afford the participant applicant an opportunity to speak. Should there be a physical elect electronic submittal of questions or concerns, they will be noted for the record. And again, the participant applicant representative will be afforded the opportunity to speak if issues raised have not yet been addressed. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay. Um, before we start with the agenda i just want to say that uh our next meeting will be september 18th um we decided that at a previous meeting and um due to the labor day holiday and september 11th uh september 18th works best for the board um okay we have a submission um from damon Jespersen. Wiffle Tree Works Level Two Site Plan Review Submission for a Nonprofit Educational Organization at One Marsh Meadow. Um, Damon, would you like to give a description of your uh, or a presentation of what you want to do? Uh, I feel like the full presentation will take place at the public hearing, but the application is to expand the parking around the barn at one marsh meadow lane to allow handicap access and better parking access for those using the facility very good um does anyone have any questions from the board i'll start with pete no questions thank you uh larry no, I don't have any questions. Uh, Scott? Scott's muted, but I saw him say I have no questions. And uh, Steve, how do you feel? Uh, no questions at this time. Uh, though certainly, uh, Damon mentioned parking. Being a resident of Plum Island, my ears always perk up over that issue. But that'll be for another day. Okay, so on, on this... Um, we have to have a, a vote to um, set the public hearing date for site plan review in public hearing of uh, Whiffle Tree at One Marsh Meadow. Um, I'd entertain a motion. Uh, Woody, just a point of procedure. Don't we first have to vote to accept the application? Oh, excuse me. Yes. Um, I, I backtrack. Yes. Sorry. Um, I would entertain a motion to accept the application. I'll so move. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Pete? Yes. Larry? Yes. Uh, Scott? Yes. And Steve, how do you feel? Yes. And I, Woody, chair, also vote yes. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion to set the public hearing date for September 18th, our next meeting. Hey, I'll, I'll move to set the public hearing date for September 19th at 7.15 p.m. Okay. It would be the 18th, correct? Oh, I'm sorry, the 18th. You're right. Yep. Okay. Second? Second. Very good. Roll call vote. Pete? Yes. Larry? Yes. Scott? Yes. And Steve, how do you feel? I would vote yes if I were voting. Very good. And uh, the chair Woody votes yes as well. So, Damon, we'll see you on 
the 18th for a public hearing. Open it on the public hearing. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you then. All right. Very good. Have a good night. You Woody, too. I just want to confirm it's on with the board like that hearing to be on Zoom. I'm assuming. Yes. And on, okay. on Zoom. Yes. I just want to make sure because I don't think the vote um, said specifically Zoom, but that's our practice. So it, that it, makes sense. It didn't. Would you like me to restate the motion? Um, sure. Just for clarity, why don't we do that? Yes. All right. Well, I'll I'll move that the uh, previously voted September eighteenth public hearing be via Zoom. Second. Great. Very good. Roll call vote again. Um, Pete. Yes. Larry. Yes. Scott. Yes. And Steve, how do you feel? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Damon, we'll see you on Zoom, September eighteenth. Have a good evening. Okay, uh, next order of business is uh, old business. We don't have any old business tonight. New business. We don't have any new business tonight. Okay, um, next thing on the agenda, uh, planning board administration slash discussion. Um, rules regarding agendas and deadlines for submissions of applicants and materials. Um, we adopted this, we adopted a, do, um, do you have that to share, Kristen? We adopted this uh, in on March 24th, 2021. And um, we're just bringing it up as a reminder um, that, this how we're going to operate business and um, just wanted to refresh the board on what we did. And it would make uh, life easier for um, us as a board to, when, to get the information in a timely fashion and for Kristen as well to get the information formatted so that it could be passed on to um, the board members via email. So that way we're not getting last minute emails on Monday and Tuesday for things that are on the agenda. Um, does anyone recall doing this in the past? Yes, indeed. Yes. Okay. So um, I don't know if this got emailed out to everyone or not, but here it is, and um, I'll read through it real quick. The playing board shall meet regularly on the first and third Wednesday of every month. Additional meetings may be called by the chair and scheduled as needed with proper posting of the agenda in accordance with the open meeting law. Meetings may be scheduled or canceled. Preparation of agenda or for planning board meetings. The agenda for each planning board meeting shall be prepared by the planning director after conferring with the chair. Agenda items for Suggested by other members of the board may be included on the agenda with the chair's approval. The agenda will close at 12 p.m. seven calendar days before a regular bi-monthly meeting of the board or no less than three days before any other meeting, excluding Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. And no changes, changes to the agenda shall take place thereafter, except as follows. Any matter coming to the attention of the planning director or a member of the board after the above state, stated closing time and considered to be an emergency matter may be inclu included on the agenda. The chair will be notified of any such changes. Consideration on matters of non-emergency nature may be allowed at the discretion of the chair, if permitted under the open meeting law, but may be tabled until the next regular meeting. Submission deadlines, new applications, drafts and of new applications to be filed with the planning board shall be submitted to the planning director for review for compliance with submission requirements no less than two weeks prior to the anticipated filing date. Applications shall be filed at a regularly scheduled planning board meeting. 
All other materials, any materials to be considered by the planning board at a regularly scheduled meeting shall be submitted to the planning director in both hard copy and electronic format, no less than seven calendar days prior to the meeting date, at which the materials will be discussed. This includes the revised documents for the continued public hearings. And that was adopted by unanimous vote of the planning board on the 24th day of March, 2021. Planning board town of Newburgh. So I just wanted to remind everyone of, that we put that policy into place and that we're going to go by it. And Kristen will remind the applicants as they, as time goes on here that this is how we're going to conduct business. Um, well, I, I would just ask you, um, I'm a new board member. Um, certainly wasn't even thinking about the planning board back in 21, but um, we put this in place March 21, and are we and or we have have we been consistently adhering um, to the policy? Um, off and on, I think at times um, we were very um, very accommodating to people turning information in late, but. Um, I find that uh, personally, my belief is that getting for board members and for myself anyways, getting information on Monday and Tuesday and then putting Kristen in the position of having to get them into emails and get the information out to us. And then for us to digest the information hours before or the day before planning board meeting is unfair fair to the fellow board members I by following this guideline we'd have the materials well in advance and as a board and as board members we'd be more prepared and well informed for our meetings if anyone else has any comments please um I appreciate that um and I agree but um you know, as uh, as a board, you know, it's the um, always the goal to be consistent, you know, with the adherence to policies. Um, and 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 you know, of course, you know, we um, we're giving and um, you know we're um, representing the town. So, I mean, there's a little bit of a you know. How, how flexible do you want to be? I completely agree with you with respect to, um, you know, time uh, that we need, you know, as a board, uh, because we are, for the most part, volunteers. Uh, so when we get things on Monday or Tuesday for a Wednesday night meeting, um, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, it puts us in a uh, difficult spot, you know, if, we have an outside or another commitment to really represent the town uh, in the best way possible, which is uh, to provide the time and the effort to review, you know, what's coming up before the board uh, to put us and the town in the best position um, um, to get us to the best place. So uh, I guess my question just goes back to you, Woody. Um, we have this policy in effect since March of 21, um, what are we what are we looking for? Are we looking for just more consistency at following the policy, or are we looking at you know strict adherence to the policy? Um, I mean, what's the what are we what are we after? I would, would could I kick in here? Yes, please, please. Yeah, so Scott, you know, in the past, um, we've really tried to. We try to stick to to guidelines, and sometimes uh, applicants can push guidelines in, in an attempt to facilitate applications. Sometimes things can, you know, get pushed in a way that they shouldn't. So the intention from when this was put into place was to be fair, not only to the board, but excuse me, there's a dog barking in the background, <laughs> but to the applicants themselves. So there were guidelines, so they knew what to do and when, when they should be uh, responsible to get information in so that the board could do what it needed to do. 
So this is basically just to kind of refresh everybody to where we want to be. Uh, if we weren't always there, you know, we weren't always there. But going forward, uh, I think this is where um, the intent is of uh, this uh, this position. If that makes if that answers no, your question. It makes, makes sense. A refresh. Um, uh, okay. Thank you for that. Thanks, Scott. Okay, and then. Um... Wendy, can I just add one comment too? Yes, go um, right ahead. Which just... is, I, as some of you know, I started my involvement in Newberry planning, serving on the planning board um, at a time when I did work full time. I my job at the time had a lot of night meetings, so I think the when I read this policy through, I was. Um, appreciative that it does intend, as you just described, Woody, to give the board time to review the materials. Ideally, it, and for me, it was really critical to get the materials before the weekend, because that was the time I had to review things. So I think, you know, just the timeline this lays out, I think is um, fair to the process, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a week in advance and then that'll give the staff time to get the information together, get the agenda and get the information out to the planning board and to the public. Um, you know, when new applications come in, we'll be putting, you know, uploading materials on the town website. Um, so it, it really does kind of, I think, benefit everybody to, strive for this. Um, that said, there are times and reasons why things come in later and, you know, we'll certainly do our best at the staff end to be reasonable about accepting things when there's a good reason that it came in late and when it's important um, for the agenda. So it's my perspective on that. Well, I have a perspective um, and I guess the board um, appreciates or would appreciate just cons a consistent approach across the board week after week, you know, month after month. Um, March of 21, um, you know, is uh, feels like a generation ago. Uh, but um, I would say that uh, I think the board would rely on you and the board members could speak as well um, to, you know, speak up, let us know when you feel it's becoming um, a little bit challenging or it's becoming a little inconsistent. Um, and then, you know, we can also uh, at any time revisit and make sure we're, um, you know, on the same page. Very good. Um, Steve, you have your hand raised. Would you like to say something? Yes, uh, when Kristen mentioned the public, my ears went up again too. And I'm thinking, um, to do a paraphrase of Kristen's situation, let's say a member of the public, and admittedly, um, public interest comes and goes on projects, but uh, let's say a member of the public was interested in something and they expected it to be in a week ahead of time because the following Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they were gonna be out of town and unable to review a document coming in late. It seems to me that we really do need to be consistent about having plans come in according to schedule so that the public can be uh, as informed as they need to be or want to be. And I'm wondering what would happen if uh, something didn't come in till Tuesday for a Wednesday meeting and you know the public was unaware of this because when they went to bed uh, Tuesday night, shall we say, there was nothing up to look at. So they didn't bother looking to see what was gonna be on the agenda for the following week because it should have been posted yep. and it wasn't. And yep. Well, the, the agenda has always been posted in a timely fashion. It has to be, but um, the information for the board and the information for the public that's going to be on a public hearing or whatever it may be, um, it, it should be consistent and there should be, there should be time to have it posted on the website and for everyone to digest it so 
Right. And I misspoke when I used the word agenda. I was thinking more about the documents being uploaded yep. for review. Thank you, Woody. Yep. Thank you, Steve. All right. Anyone else have anything to say on that matter or can we move on? Move on. All right. Uh, liaison reports. And we have the ZBA. Larry? Um, yeah, the um, uh, ZBA has not met since our last meeting. And uh, they're meeting on the uh, 19th of September. And I don't know what's going to be on the agenda. So I really have nothing to report at this time. Okay. Um, then uh, select board, do we have a, Kristen, do you have anything on the select board? Um, sure. I attended the select board meeting last night. Um, uh, primarily for the public hearing that was opening regarding the um, property at 34 Central Street, which had notified the town um, select board, planning board, conservation commission of the intent to withdraw the property from the um, Chapter 61A agricultural tax classification use um, for for agricultural land. Um, so the planning board had reviewed that at an earlier meeting, I think that July meeting, um, and made a recommendation to the select board regarding the town's right of first refusal on the property. So last night, the select board was um, considering that uh, notice and discussing um, whether they were interested in exercising the town's right of first refusal on that property. Um, so they actually continued the hearing. Um, there was a little bit of discussion. Uh, you know, I clarified the memo that the planning board had sent or just reminded the select board members about um, the planning board's recommendation. And um, there was a member of the open space committee who spoke about um, the process related to consideration of the town's right of first refusal. So the select board um, wanted to get a little more information. And so they continued the hearing to their September meeting, which I think is, um, I'm not actually sure. I think it's not till the 24th. I think it's at the end of September. Okay. So that was, um, other than that, there were liquor licenses and some business licenses. Um, and I didn't stay for all of the meeting, but I don't think there was any other substantive discussion. Very good. Um, conservation met last night. Um, there, was, there was only one thing on the agenda that really pertained to us. It was the Sunset Club at um, Two Old Point. They intend to, they did not, um, the, co the tolling did not pass with legislation. So they intend to um, submit a new NOA and they had the, at Millennium, Millennium Engineering, they had some problems, health problems. And um, so they did not have that prepared in time and submitted. So they're gonna continue to the next meeting. And that's the only update I have from conservation. So um, the next thing on the agenda, um, planners director, uh, planning director's report. Thanks, Woody. Um, let's see, what's the news? Um, so the town uh, clerk, and uh, the town received notice from the attorney general that the um, multifamily MBTA, multifamily overlay district bylaw that town meeting passed um, in uh, the annual town meeting in, on April was approved. So, um, so that uh, is the green light from the attorney general, which is required within the 90 days after town meeting. Um, the, so that bylaw is in the books and uh, official. Um, the uh, 
review of the bylaw for compliance by the Housing and Livable Communities um, Agency of the state is still underway. Um, they are prioritizing review of um, towns that are required to be compliant by December 2024. Newberry, as you remember, was in the category of required to be compliant by December 2025. So we haven't heard from the um, HLC about their review of the bylaw yet, but wanted to share the attorney general um, letter. Um, a couple grants related updates. Um, we are uh, partnering in a regional grant with that Merrimack Valley Planning Commission is putting in regarding um, it's the Safe Streets for All program um, that we've heard a little about the Vision Zero um, project, which is looking at uh, crash data and analyzing um, locations across the region where there are safety concerns for all users, whether it's car accidents, um, pedestrian, bike accidents. So that project, um, that plan is finishing up this month and I think will be available for public comment um, at the next uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization um, transportation meeting, which is next week. So as soon as that's available for public comment, I'll, I'll share that around. Um, and I think I'll put a news release on the website as well for the community. Um, but anyway, now that the plan is being finalized, the town is eligible for grants for demonstration projects. So the location that we've worked on with Merrimack Valley um, Planning Commission is the intersection of Elm Street and School Street. Um, so this grant will be going in, uh, being submitted in the next couple of weeks, um, and we'll know uh, probably at some point in the winter whether um, that's been funded or not. The grant would be to, uh, it's, as I said, a demonstration grant. So it's um, basically doing an engineering assessment of strategies to make safety improvements and then actually implementing on the ground in a temporary way. So it's not new concrete sidewalks, but it's mobility mats or um, bollards, um, different kinds of um, crosswalks or solar lighting, different strategies for that intersection to make it safer. So it's pretty. It's a pretty cool project. I'm really thrilled that Newbury was chosen among the towns to be a part of this regional demonstration grant. So. Um, and they're pretty confident. It's federal um, highway money. So they're pretty confident that the region will get funded. So um, let's see. Um, I wanted to mention the Border to Boston um, has some activity. Border to Boston Trail, uh, the segment between Byfield and Georgetown, which has been um, in the planning works for a long time, as you, I think, most of you recall, but the Mass DOT has hired a um, wetland surveyor to get out into that segment and update the wetland salination that was done prior to COVID and is outdated. So, um, so it's just good that that is moving forward. Um, I've met with a new planner in Georgetown and they're, they have an active citizen group, um, you know, working on advocating for that as well. So. I'll keep people posted um, on that. Let's see. Um, and just a couple of events I wanted to mention. Um, there's two really good, Storm Surge is partnering with the Newburyport Climate Resiliency Committee to um, bring two speakers um, to the area coming up. One is uh, coming up on September 5th and the title of the um, the, uh, speaker is talking on the topic of why community is critical for climate resiliency. So meaning social structures of community and how that um, plays a role in um, preparing communities for climate um, impacts. So that should be good. That's September 5th, 7 p.m. at the Senior Center in Newburyport. 
And then their October meeting, which um, I don't think is on their calendar yet, um, is going to be focused more on at the homeowner level, like what are some resources and strategies for you know, each individual property owner to take on their own property, their home, their yard, their um, spaces to uh, have their property be more resilient. So those are two really good ones. Um, housing related, just briefly, um, I attended a regional um, housing for all summer social uh, last week. It was held in Ipswich and it had um, representatives from all the coalitions throughout the North Shore who are working on housing issues, um, housing um, equity and housing affordability. Um, and it was, it was just really cool to be in a room um, with all different towns who are you know, sharing concern about the price of housing and the availability of housing. Um, and Lieutenant uh, Kim Driscoll was the speaker at that, and she was she was great. So that was cool. And then last thing, um, Amesbury on September 18th is hosting with Newburyport a um, another uh, housing uh, event called Strong Towns. And my understanding is it's a, a, a na national advocacy, not advocacy, but um, planning group that really focuses on how to build uh, strong communities and looking at the history of um, suburban development in particular and how to sort of reshape the direction our housing is going in order to provide more availability and affordability. So September 18th for that one. And let's see. Yeah, um, finally, just we did receive five different um, proposals for the Plum Island Turnpike Resiliency Project. And um, the review team is will be um, interviewing, having the teams from those engineering firms come in person. Um, we're hoping to have a firm hired by um, the middle of September. That's it. Very good, thank you, Kristen. Hey, um, hey, Woody. Yes. Could I just throw one, one question? Hey, um, Kristen, did we want to talk about uh, MVPC and their request um, um, that the town planner actually be the MVPC uh, uh, representative and voting member, and that uh, the planning board member would then become the alternate member? And I was very accommodating to that, and I think that makes perfect sense. So I don't know if you wanted to bring that up in your planner's report. So going forward, that would make the MVPC report would be, uh, you'd be the MVPC liaison. Do, would we need a motion for that too, to make that transition? Um, yeah, thank you, Pete, um, for remembering to bring that up. Um, uh, yes, I believe it would be good to have a vote for that um, if the board is you know, open to that. As I think you all recall, Martha was the um, representative and I my sense from Merrimack Valley planning is that you know, works pretty well um, to have the planning director uh, be representative. So, um, so I'm certainly open to playing that role if that's if that works for the planning board. Frankly, I thought we already voted you as the uh, commissioner. Um, we have voted Pete. Oh, so we can okay. change hats very nicely, Larry, and I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm okay with that. And if you'd like okay. to make a motion, I'd be happy to second it. All right. Um, so, uh, okay, that... what would the motion be that uh, uh, the Kristen Grubbs be appointed? Recommend to the select board that Kristen be appointed the uh, MVPC commissioner from Newberry. Town planner. Town planner. Be appointed the MVPC commissioner from Newberry. Did I get yeah. that right? That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Second, I'd be happy to second that. <laughs> okay, roll call vote. Uh, Pete, yes, Larry, yes, Scott, whoa, yes, <laughs> uh, Steve. How do you feel? I'm not going to debate it, so I'll be okay, scared. and I'd say yes as well. Congratulations, Kristen. <laughs> Great. <laughs> And yeah, I'm happy to, I'm happy to, it's a lot of the, um, 
we work with them so closely, so it'll it'll be a good, and I'll share anything relevant as soon as I hear it. No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of synergy there. And I know um, Healy recently signed um, some legislation relating to um, um, the accessory dwelling units in the Commonwealth. Um, I'm not sure if this would be, you know, a platform or your report. Um, you know, it would be uh, a nice way to update or keep us abreast of, you know, something um, that, uh, you know, could be important to the town. Um, but it uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I may have mentioned it briefly at the last meeting, um, but it is um, a component of the Affordable Homes Act that has the um, requirement that communities allow accessory dwelling units by right. Um, Newbury is in the position of having had an accessory dwelling unit um, on the books, unlike a lot of towns in Massachusetts. But um, the key now is to look at what we have, look at what the new legislation is. Um, and that's that's been started by town council. And there's a lot of um, discussion at the zoning enforcement officer level. Um, previously, the ZBA has been the permitting authority for accessory dwelling units. So I know the, Z the ZBA members are you know, attending trainings and reading the 300 page legislation. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of good activity and a lot of work to do to figure out exactly how each town now implements the new legislation. Okay, thank you. Very First, good. Uh, me, earlier on, you mentioned uh, people from various towns getting together and talking about you know housing production affordability you know that you that laundry list of concerns when it comes to housing and i'm i may be repeating myself but wondering do people get around to talking about short-term rentals as being in my opinion a big part of the problem about housing availability and the price of housing um, yes, it, it's, it's definitely, you're, I, I think that's a very good point that you're making that it, it is, has being demonstrated that the transition of smaller units into short-term rentals has really taken longer-term rentals off the market. And it is a cause of a lot of the, um, shortage. I haven't seen any, you know, I'd be interested to see if there's data on that yet, but it's certainly something that um, planning, you know, planning staff, planning boards are looking at, um, are, are there ways to regulate short-term rentals that would help alleviate the, the problem that can bring, um, certainly New Rayport just passed regulations this past year. Um, so, and I don't know if you've been watching that, Steve, but I know they're different different regulations on Plum Island and in other parts of the town. Um, and it's a pretty complicated um, issue <laughs> for, yeah. Right, well, one could spend a lot of time doing a study to determine that, that's, that it's part of the problem. Whereas the old scientist in me would say, by inspection, short-term rentals are a problem. We don't need to do a major study. It'll take 18 months. But where I really go with it after arm waving about how the, it's obviously a problem. So I could try to identify what specific things would need to be done to address the problem. And is it legislation? Is it in which case what legislation? But, you know, trying to jump ahead to identifying what needs to be done and try to make it be done without delaying things with a study. Yeah. But, longer study yeah yeah no i agree and i it's towns are taking action so we can you know that's a good place to start as well it's just to see like how how are the people who are a little bit ahead of newbury um how's it working you yeah. so definitely um you know i think bylaw sort of special 
special work bylaw review and research and recommendations is a category of um, work that when we get two people in the planning office again and you know maybe future interns like there's it's it's a really good kind of project to just kind of dive right into and in fact it's something Martha and I have talked about in her um, role as sort of special projects planner if that might be one area important to look at so um, I don't know maybe maybe we can have a workshop with the board at a later date as Martha gets into her um, review of the zoning bylaw and the recodification to kind of look at some of the special special sections um, and dive into that a little more. So it's a pretty, it's an important topic and it's a complex one. So it would probably merit some deeper conversation. Sure. And I'm still new to the planning board, obviously, but you said also the magic word workshop and it occurs to me there may be some things that we need to revisit and talk about, whether it be, you know, what is Martha's role? Uh, what is Joe Swartek's role, which I still don't fully understand, and some other issues about way, about how the planning board as elected officials, or in my case, appointed, you know, interact with the director of planning and, you know, what are the roles and responsibilities? And maybe that would be a fruitful conversation for us all to be on the same page. With that, I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Woody. Um, there's nothing else in the planner's director's report, which I think Kristen said she was done, and then we had a few more topics. Um, we'll move on to meeting minutes. Uh, we need to approve approval of the um, August 7th, 2024 meeting minutes. Um, has everyone had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? Um, I, I have, Woody, and I, I have one question and one comment, if I may. Go right um, ahead, Larry. The version I have uh, does not include the link uh, to the video recording. Has that been added, Kristen? Um, yes. Thank you, Larry, for pointing that out. Um, I did, I think when I first sent it to the board, it hadn't been um, uploaded yet. So I will make sure that the version we're approving has that link live. And the comment is, if you haven't already done so, under the, the materials reviewed at the meeting, we've got the uh, three Newburyport Turnpike um, uh, information, but I'd also add the Golf Center as built plan because we did take that up at the meeting. Yes, I will add that. Thanks. Other than that, it looks fine to me. Anyone else have any uh, comments on the meeting minutes? Hearing none, um, I'd entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes for August 7th, 2024 with the revisions that Larry just stated. You have a motion. Second? Second. I'll second. Very good. Uh, roll call vote. Peter. Yes. Larry? Yes. Uh, Scott? Yes. And Steve, how do you feel? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So meeting minutes are approved. Um, Larry, do you have an update on approval of past minutes? Uh, yeah, just uh, very briefly, Woody. Um, I'm sure you all recall it. At the height of COVID, we did get behind on our, on our meeting minutes, and I've been working um, along first with Martha and Kristen, and now with Kristen to kind of bring those up to date. And you recall you authorized me as uh, to approve them once they're in appropriate, uh, satisfactory form. And I'm glad to report that we have 2022 completed. So. And uh, Kristen and I are uh, working uh, diligently to uh, catch up with 2021. And uh, we'll hope to have that wrapped up in the very near future. Very good. good Thanks, Larry. Good. Yes, thank you, Larry. That's, I'm sure it's a lot of work. A lot of OT, Larry. Yeah, but. Thank you. Right. Thank it you. needs to be done and we can handle it. Right, Kristen? Absolutely. Right. Your help right. is instrumental for sure. All right. 
Now, uh, seeing nothing else on the agenda. Um, Absolutely. Can I motion. jump in? I, I think oh. it was one item that got passed over. That's the uh, in, introduction to the remote meeting. Uh, the preamble for yeah. the meeting, yes. Um, Kristen, do you still have that? I, I, we, I did pass over that. That was, um, I, I was wondering if we could shorten that up a bit. And uh, she, Kristen checked with town council and they added some things that we can get rid of it in the preamble. And then the rest of it was pretty much up to me. I haven't had a chance to edit any more of it. So I was, I kind of passed up on that on purpose, but we can have a discussion about it if you wish. Um, I yeah, just, and, um, just, just, sorry, it's not coming up, Woody, but I wonder if um, what might be good is to edit it and then, um, Get Go from there. Share it around. Um, if if that's all right with the board, we'll bring this up at a later date. I the what we have now is about six or seven minutes long, and it'd be nice to shorten it up a bit if we can. I agree, hundred percent. I would town agree. Councils. And uh, thank you for um, um, addressing it. Uh, but I think that's a great idea, Kristen. Um, you know, if you want to take a stab at at uh, making some uh, changes to the uh, or creating a draft, passing it around, and uh, and we could probably comment. Very good. You know, so we'll take that up. The, and, oh, go ahead, Steve. Make, I'm sorry. Uh, Cause say when I saw town council's notes, it sounded like she was agreeable to having much of it deleted and much of it remain. But I thought it was a good document to move forth on and I guess pass it on to you Woody and Kristen and then pass it around to us but I was pleased that she was willing to delete some items yep. yeah it would be great to shorten it up a bit all right so we'll take that up in, a, in a, either the next meeting or in the future I um, seeing nothing else on the agenda now um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, before that, uh, I, I would like to say, um, you know, very nice job, Woody. Um, I think this is your first one. Uh, so, uh, great job. Appreciate it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll try to do my best at this job. Uh, I will Thanks, make a Scott. motion. Is that a motion as well, Scott? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Very good, Larry. Um, roll, roll call vote. Um, Pete? Yes. Larry? Yes. Uh, Scott? Yes. And Steve, how do you feel? Yes. And I say yes as well, and good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Good job. We're out.